Hello my friend, this is Paul Drockton, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the history uh, of the Deseret News, and we're going to get into uh, its uh, sister uh, publication, which is KSL.com. Now, interesting thing about the Deseret News is the Deseret News is owned by the Deseret Management Company. The Deseret Management Company is owned by the Mormon Church. So, clearly, the editorial policies of the Deseret newspaper reflect uh, the policies of the Mormon Church. It's just that simple. You can't disconnect the two. Now, one of the things that I was able to do is when I was uh, involved in the uh, anti-Mormon discrimination lawsuit, in other words, when I was defending other Mormons and myself from discrimination with farmers insurance, um, Joe Cannon was the editor of the Deseret News. And basically, I was able to uncover the fact that he had separated uh, $80 million worth of water shares from Geneva Steel before he bankrupted the company and he was forced to resign. So long story short is shortly thereafter, uh, Gordon B. Hinckley interviewed a gentleman named Jonathan Hughes as editor. Now, Jonathan Hughes is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. And that might not mean a lot to you, but uh, the Council on Foreign Relations is tied in uh, with uh, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, uh, the usual suspects. And Jonathan Hughes, um, if you looked at his editorial bent, it was globalism. It was, you know, uniting this world and one world government. Now, I was able to get a document that showed that John Hughes was actually a member of the Christian Scientist Church, and he wasn't even Mormon. And when I published that, that was the end of John Hughes. Uh, he took a quick retirement, moved over to Brigham Young, Utah, where I understand he still teaches journalism. So after uh, John Hughes' uh, rapid departure, uh, someone else replaced him. But what you need to look at, you need to look at the editorial policies of a newspaper to see what the opinion of the owner is. Uh, in the history of newspapers, royalty in England bought newspapers because they wanted to control the editorial policy. They wanted to control uh, what people thought about specific subjects. And that's no different than the United States. Now, we've gone through uh, quite a history uh, with the Deseret News, but if you take a look at what's going on uh, over the last 20 years, it's, it should be glaringly obvious that this is not Ezra Tapp Benson's church anymore. It just isn't. And that these individuals are pushing this country uh, into um, this uh, one world government. So, let's talk about the Count My Vote initiative. Did you know, did you know that uh, the Deseret News endorsed it? They supported it. There's multiple articles I posted on my Facebook page. And the Count My Vote initiative is a way to bypass the caucus system. The Utah caucus system has been around since 1896. And it's based on neighborhoods getting together, selecting a delegate, sending that delegate to the Republican convention. And at the convention, those delegates then select who they want as their nominee for the Republican office. They're not electing anybody. They're selecting who they want to represent them. So think about that. Do you or do you not have the right to decide who is going to represent you? Isn't that really what the Constitution is based on? So if a group of like-minded people get together and they make a decision that they want a person to represent them because they share the same ideals, they share the same objectives, then that is their constitutional right. Where the criminality comes, where the criminality comes in, is when the Utah legislature comes in and passes a law that says that the Republican Party must must use a closed primary system, basically uh, as an alternative to the caucus system. In other words, what they're saying is, is that yeah, we'll let the caucus system continue but we're gonna make its influence meaningless. So basically these neighborhood caucuses still go on. Uh, neighborhoods are still choosing their representatives, the delegates that they want, sending them to a convention to select a nominee. 
but it's meaningless because all you would need to do to get on the ballot is gather enough signatures and you can put the R after your name and force a Republican primary. Now, let me ask you, does that sound like constitutional principles are at work? Well, the reality is, is the Deseret newspaper, again, which is uh, the spokespiece for the Mormon church and clearly represents the opinion of the owners, which are not you and me, but uh, the uh, current leaders of the Mormon church, in order to get their agenda passed, uh, which has, I will, I'll explain that to you as well, uh, they solid, solidly endorsed uh, dismantling the caucus system and replacing it with a closed primary. Um, ended up creating a dual system to the ballot in the Republican Party. We're not talking about uh, getting someone on the ballot. You always have that right. You don't have the right, though. You do not have the right, for example. Let me just put this in perspective, all right? Uh, let's pretend that, uh, oh, let's see. Let's pretend that you belong to the Mormon Church and you want to be the prophet, right? The Mormon Church has a system that they use to select their leader. What this is like is me saying, you know what? That system isn't fair. It doesn't represent everybody. There's only 12 people that make that decision, right? So I go out and I get signatures of my fellow Mormons to make me the prophet. That's what they're doing. It's the exact same concept. It has nothing to do with representing uh, your ideals because clearly if we were to permit that, then anybody could come into Utah, anybody could raise money, and anybody could end up being the leader of our church. So don't you think that people with the same ideology have the right to be represented by someone that shares that, that ideology? Now, this isn't the first time that the Deseret News has gone against the will of the uh, Republicans. For example, we all know that uh, Utah went sol solidly for Trump. Mitt Romney uh, basically helped put together a ghost candidate. The Deseret News' editorial policy was very pro-Clinton. They completely ignored her scandals. They, they completely ignored the email scandal. They ignored uh, the uh, scandal of uh, uh, taking Libya down in Muammar Gaddafi. They ignored uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, foundation scandal. The fact that this woman uh, had raised $3 billion, $3 billion from foreign entities for her foundation while she was running the State Department, which in essence decides which countries can buy arms from the United States of America. So this woman controlled U.S. commerce and she used her position to raise money, which is basically treason. Because it wasn't about U.S. interests, it was about whoever the highest bidder was and whoever gave the most money to her foundation. So, we could talk about that. We can talk about the Clinton body count. I don't even know what it's up to now. It's like 37 people that uh, have been murdered and some have been uh, portrayed as suicides. None of that's in the Deseret News because they wanted her. Now, even more disconcerting, if you take a look at with the ballot replacement for the caucus system has brought us. We have Governor Gary Herbert, who is who is beholden now to the globalists, to Mitt Romney, and to his uh, foreign influencers. See, this is the thing. This is why Mitt Romney and Hillary Clinton get along so well, is because they were both bought and paid for by the communist Chinese. And by the Russians and by other countries that do not represent our interests. Just Google it. Long story short, now that Gary Herbert was able to win the governorship, he lost that convention, he lost through the caucus system, he was not going to be able to run as a Republican, but thanks to Count My Vote, they were able to go out, get signatures, put them on the ballot, and trust me, uh, elections are easily, easily um, to manipulate. You've got your voting machines that uh, can be pre-programmed. Uh, you've got your absentee ballots, whereby all you do is use the person's address, send it in, 
and voila, people that are uh, dead, people that are sick, dogs, cats, birds, field mice, <laughs> they all can vote under the absentee uh, ballot. And you just make sure you have enough of those extra absentee ballots so that whatever you need, you can win. Now, that's just one way you can commit fraud. The other way that they've managed to commit fraud is, is that when you look at the caucus system, if you want to go to a neighbor caucus, you have to be a registered Republican before you show up. And if you're not registered with any party, you can join the Republican Party. But if you're a Democrat and you show up to a Republican caucus, you're not going to get in. So it protects the ideology of the Republican Party in Utah. Second of all, when you go to vote in a closed primary, right, those restrictions are gone. It doesn't matter what party you're with. You can go ahead and send an absentee ballot poll, uh, vote in if you're a Democrat or an independent, and they're going to count it. They, I've read the statute. They count all, all absentee ballots. So, like I said, there's multiple ways to commit election fraud. and But the real problem is this. When you look at the caucus system, it really does give us the power, gives the people the power of Utah. People that don't have uh, hundreds of millions of dollars or billions of dollars, it puts us in power. And we are allowed to have proper representation because that's really what this is. This is a representative government. This is a Republican government, not a democracy. It's a Republican government. We choose people to represent us based on our ideals, based on our beliefs, right? Those are the people that should be going to Washington. But because of the Count My Vote initiative sponsored, sponsored by the Utah Buckshot Caucus members, Mitt Romney's campaign, and the other uh, Utah Kingmen, along with their brethren running the Mormon Church, and their mouthpiece, the Deseret News and KSL.com, all it takes now to win in Utah is a whole lot of money. So Mitt Romney, who doesn't even live in Utah, is a resident of Massachusetts who just established residence in Utah so he can run for Senate here, is a carpetbagger. He has no business running for Senate. But it doesn't matter because he's got the money. And now he's got the signatures. So he will be on the ballot. Even though tomorrow's caucuses are going to reject him soundly because there's no way you're going to be able to commit fraud at the caucus and no way you're going to be able to commit fraud at convention by the way conventions tomorrow my apologies so long story short Mitt Romney loses the Republican nomination and yet he's still permitted to run as a Republican in Utah simply because he paid to have a group of paid individuals go out and gather signatures for him see money buys, buys anything you need in Utah if you want it you can buy it with money Long story short, what we need to do as individuals is, is understand who our friends are and who our enemies are. Look, your friend is the Bill of Rights. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you come from. The Bill of Rights is your friend. Your freedom of speech, your freedom of the press, your freedom to worship however you wish and however you please, uh, those are God-given rights. And no man has the right to take it away from you. More importantly, if you go and read the Declaration of Independence, it talked about uh, all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, originally, originally uh, Thomas Paine or John Locke, I don't remember which one, wrote life, liberty, and property. So, in the Bill of Rights, you have the right to do process. Due process means you cannot be deprived of life, liberty, or property without having a trial by jury before your peers. So you don't want to lose this. These rights were hard fought. It started in England with the Magna Carta when the monarch was forced because of a war to concede a jury trial to the nobility. Long story short, we're talking centuries and centuries of individuals that have shed their blood so that we can have the freedoms that are established within the Constitution. And if you go back 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, you're going to see that 
leaders like Ezra Taft Benson, David O. McKay, other individuals, they recognized how powerful and how important these were. Cleon Skousen, other great names, they were literally, literally pro-constitutionalists. Today, uh, within our church, they don't even talk about the Constitution anymore. They don't even talk about the Bill of Rights. And yet it's a keystone of our religion. Because if you read the Book of Mormon, it talks about our liberty. And it talks about how once liberty is lost, it's only bloodshed that can bring it back. So we need to do everything we can to make sure that we defeat these Gadian robbers and these kingmen in this election. How do we do it? Make sure you share this information with your friends. Make sure they understand how big this threat is, because if they don't get it now, there's other things going on. Governor Herbert, after Romney got him the governorship through the Count My Vote initiative, after he got the governorship because of basically losing that convention and being able to go out and gather signatures, thanks to the Deseret News, owned by the Mormon Church, KSL.com, owned by the Mormon Church, Mitt Romney, who probably owns the Mormon Church, Governor Herbert was able to get on the ballot as a Republican, even though he lost at caucuses, even though he lost at convention, simply by gathering signatures. So he owes them. They're globalists. They're bringing about their one world government. And the reality is that this one world government is not there to make you wealthy. It's there to make them wealthy. And long story short, in return, Governor Herbert push the Inland Port Authority by the Salt Lake International Airport. The Inland Port Authority is nothing more than a gift to the Communist Chinese. It allows them to have a massive parcel of land where they can build whatever they want, they can fly in whatever they want to the Salt Lake International Airport, they can take it to that area without any restrictions, without any customs. Um, investigation without anybody looking inside the crates that they're bringing in or the trucks or the tanks or the jeeps or whatever else the howitzers I don't know whatever they want to bring in they can bring in and if you don't think that poses a threat to you and me the fact that we have literally an economic rival and an avowed enemy to the West China is an avowed enemy to the West don't fool yourself these people don't forget they refer to uh, the late 1800s the, through the mid-1900s as the century of shame, whereby China was gutted and looted by the West. Great Britain and its colonies and its allies gutted and looted Imperial China. When you go to the uh, museum, you can still see all the Chinese art there. If you think the Communist Chinese don't use that to expand their empire, and their power, and that their desire is to literally um, pay us back, because that's how they look at it, they look in the balance of scales, then you don't understand the culture. I do. I understand uh, the motives. And the sad reality is Utah has a long history of supporting communist China. That goes all the way back to Mariner Eccles, the Eccles family. Yes, Mariner Eccles who saved the Federal Reserve System, who, whose name is written on the Federal Reserve Building in Washington, D.C. Mariner Eccles, who basically uh, put together the system of, of uh, international slavery that we refer to as the Federal Reserve System, who put together the World Bank that lets countries borrow money to pay their debt to the Federal Reserve System, and then forces them to repay that debt in gold. That was Mariner Eccles. Mariner Eccles uh, wrote repeatedly about normalizing relations with communist China. Mariner Eccles uh, knew that uh, Mao Zedong was murdering millions, millions of his countrymen during the Cultural Revolution, and he still pushed for normalization of relations. This would be the equivalent of someone in Utah trying to normalize relations with Adolf Hitler during the Holocaust. It's the same thing. You know, a human life is a human life. I don't care where they come from. I don't care what religion, what nationality. And genocide is genocide. And trust me when I tell you, 
I understand that the Jewish genocide was 6 million Jews. When you look at the Chinese genocide, the communist Chinese genocide, you're literally talking upwards of 60 million people. That's 10 times the size of the Jewish Holocaust. And yet we don't hear about it. And they don't talk about it. And people like Mitt Romney capitalize on it. He knows the history. But he makes money with the communist Chinese. And the way he makes money with the communist Chinese is he basically, through his hedge fund, buys companies, guts them, and then makes sure that uh, the communist Chinese can buy the assets. So these people are not your friend. And look, I can explain so much more to you, which I promise I will. Everything I'm telling you, you can Google, you can research, it's all documented. I don't, I never, ever, ever, ever throw anything out there that's a lie. I make sure that my information is accurate. Why? Because you need to know the truth, whatever it is, so that you can make a choice. Last but not least, let's talk about immigration. First of all, anybody who knows me knows that I love Hispanics. Everyone, anybody that knows me knows that I love people from all across the world. Heck, if I were to count the number of friends I have uh, in South America and Africa and the Philippines, it's insane. Why? Because I love everybody, as long as they're good. What uh, I don't love is I don't love protecting criminals, regardless of where they come from. And here in the United States, we have a responsibility to protect ourselves from criminals. Well, thanks to Mitt Romney, thanks to the Marriott's, and thanks to the Mormon Church, um, they passed what was known as the Utah Compact, which basically forbids police officers from turning over criminals. I'm not talking about people that uh, don't have a passport or don't have a visa or don't have citizenship papers. I'm talking about someone who's in the commission of a crime. I'm talking about violent criminals. I'm talking about rapists and pedophiles, murderers. They can't turn them over for deportation. Now, I don't care if you're Hispanic. I don't care if you're African. I don't care if you're from the Philippines. You're going to feel the way I do about this because your family lives here with me. And let me tell you something. What they do is they try to divide us by lumping everybody together, right? All white people are evil. All black people are evil. All Hispanics are evil. That's how the media works. Divide and conquer. I'm just trying to point out to you that the people behind this division in the United States of America are Mitt Romney, the Eccles family, the Marriott's, and the leaders of the Mormon Church who personally went to the Utah legislature to make sure that it passed the Utah Compact. Now last but not least, I love the Lord, but I love the truth, and God is truth. Throughout the centuries, there's people that have killed in the name of the religion, thinking that they were serving God. And I guarantee you right now, there's people that are watching this video or watching my post and saying, man, I'd like to kill that guy because they think that's what God wants. You know what God wants? He wants the truth. He wants you to be able to see through the veneer, to see through the costumes, to see through the false robes of the priesthood and to recognize that these are wolves in sheep's clothing that are plundering you and your children and that their goal is to create a universal slave, slave state where the only one that enjoys any of the benefits of property ownership are them and their minions. That, my friends, is what their goal is. They're going to take away everything you own. They're going to take away your families. They're going to take away <laughs> your freedoms. And I don't want to live in a state like that. So I'm trying to do the best I can to help people see the truth so that all of us can join together and so that we can fight and resist these individuals with the truth. Get the truth out there. Let people make a choice. Once the choice is made, if the majority of people choose the wrong thing, if they choose to serve evil, which I don't believe they will, then the judgments of God are poured out on our nation. So... Long story short, thank you for listening. Um, I do appreciate your support. God bless you. Make sure that this is spread far and wide. This isn't the doctrine of hate, my friends. This is a doctrine of love. If you truly love your neighbor, then you want him 
to be free. Free to pursue his life, his liberty, and his happiness, regardless of where that person came from. You want him to be free of criminals and gangs and drugs and all the other things that these globalists have brought to the great state of Utah, poisoning our kids, poisoning our future, destroying our education system, making it so that literally life is almost intolerable no matter where you go. This, my friends, is what I oppose. God bless. Have a great day.